Christian response to that. Like Ryan Brown and Andrew Mooney have Christian responses to two in another set of words, another false form of being in other people's mind. Paul did that to two individuals in Smyrna. So that's a Jewish community in our city. Practice the Sabbath. Take one fall from CISC. Paul did that to secure the great church of St. Paul's residents from being taken to prison. Paul did that to the blessing of the crowd. In fact, our Reformation did that to secure the crowd and the great conversion. Item number four on the agenda, public comments, open forum. Can you check the back table to see if anyone signed up? Bring the paper up here, please. Board tonight signed up to speak during the three minute public comment is Aaron Montes Nieto. He's with the COP program debrief. Mr. Montes Nieto, if you'll come up to the podium. Here. Ready? Ready. All right, my name is Aaron Montes Nieto. I am. Um, I currently live at 1601 North Blair Avenue, Cleveland, Texas, 77327. For the next two and a half minutes, I'm gonna talk about the uh, COPS program. First off, it is a great program, uh, Community on Patrol. I, I love whoever you know thought of the idea, um, getting the parents and community members involved. Uh, what I wanna discuss is uh, some of the ideas that, it, that myself, along with other faculty members, talked about. One would be, uh, getting walkie-talkies for all the volunteers. That, that way, instead of trying to call somebody or try to find somebody, you can just radio it in. Hey, I have something going on at this place and this place. Y'all need to get over here. I think that'd be a lot faster than looking for somebody. Um, another thing would be getting uh, badges for those people, like the substitute badges. Because I know I didn't want to walk outside to the portables knowing that I wasn't going to be able to walk back in. So that would be another good idea. Um, Lastly, and I know this is going to sound kind of funny, but if y'all could have different size vests for the <laughs> COP program, I'm not skinny in no way, shape, form, or fashion, so a large one does not fit. Um, I'm not going to say what size I would like, but maybe if y'all had from small to 2XL or 3XL, it'd be a little bit better. Um, also, um, going out there and seeing firsthand what the schools are actually going through would help a lot of the community members understand what the district is facing. There's a lot of overcrowding. I went to Cleveland High School, Cleveland Middle School, Southside, Eastside, Santa Fe Elementary, and Santa Fe Middle School. And um, yeah, I did say middle school. I, I said middle school, I got you, I got you. And um, there was a lot of overcrowding at almost all of those schools. I know uh, I had fun at the elementary schools because a lot of kids are like high-fiving and all that other stuff that was pretty neat. Um, but uh, the, uh, the high school was, Cleveland High School was the one that was really overcrowded. Um, I just need all the parents and community members to just give it a shot on school. Just go out there and see what we're going through, see what the district is going through, and that way you'll have a better understanding of what needs to be done. So. That uh, pretty much ends my statement right there. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you, Aaron. 
Thank you, Mr. Montes Nieto. Moving along on the agenda, item five, recognitions. Item A, music presentation and recognition to the Board of Trustees by Cleveland High School Band. Uh, good evening, everyone. Again, thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to come in uh, and, and kind of give you a, a small presentation of what these students have been working on. We have two groups here tonight. Uh, both of these groups uh, auditioned. Uh, they submitted a recording and were selected uh, across nation, the nationwide search of different ensemble groups to perform at the Music for All Chamber National Festival in Indianapolis, Indiana. That was here uh, shortly after spring break, here in the month of March. And the guys, uh, both teams went up there and uh, represented Cleveland uh, to just the highest degree and have uh, done very, very well uh, representing, again, representing themselves, Cleveland High School uh, and the Cleveland community at large. So uh, we're going to let them uh, perform a little bit for you guys of uh, one of their pieces that they performed in Indianapolis. Uh, I do ask for a little forgiveness because they haven't really played it in about three weeks. So if they, there's a little something wonky, just forgive them. Uh, but we have contest on Wednesday. Uh, and then after that, we'll, uh, we'll uh, show the board as far as our, uh, the recognition, the, the plaques they received. So ladies, go ahead. So uh, just to uh, just to read the plaque here, and this this will hang uh, again. This is a gift to Cleveland ISD, you know, to, to hang in our in our awards uh, area, our, our our museum, and it's something that can hang in the band hall forever, to ever for always to for these ladies to come back 30 years from now with their families and say, look what I did, and look what I was able to do. But it reads, presented in recognition of musical excellence and outstanding achievement at the Chamber Music National Festival to the Cleveland High School Royal Braves Band. Royal Braves Clarinet Quartet, Mr. Danny Diostato, Mr. James Marino, directors, part of the Music for All National Festival presented by Yamaha March 21st through 23rd, 2024, Indianapolis, Indiana. Y'all give one more hand. Work, ladies. Congratulations, girls. Thank you all so much. And we'll find a very good 
place to hang the plaque where everybody is going to see it. We'll make sure they can even see it from the street. How about that one? All right, we will go to the next item, and then we will come back to another. Item B, the Fine Arts Teachers Recognition by Christy Jones. Okay. Well, then we will see you on the agenda for next month. How about that? <laughs> and there's plenty of fine art teacher recognition. So basically what she's saying is there's so much, it's going to take her another month to get it ready uh, to present to you. <laughs> Item C, Better Together, the peanut butter and jelly drive winner announcement by C.C. Kervik. okay going after Christy, but not after that performance. <laughs> <laughs> From March 18th to April 5th, Santa Fe Middle School and Cleveland Middle School participated in the first annual Better Together Peanut Butter and Jelly Drive. It's just a friendly competition where both schools get together, one school gets peanut butter, one school gets jelly, and the winner gets a prize. Together, these schools raised or collected over 800 jars. As it was a friendly competition, the school that collected the most by one jar mm. is Cleveland Middle School. Oh! oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Can you please one jar? <laughs> it's really not by one jar. I'm so glad you beat him. One jar? One jar. Wow. Yes, no, it was not one jar. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say thank you to the staff and students at um, Santa Fe Middle School and Cleveland Middle School for making the difference in the lives of our community. And the jars will be donated to Tough Kids, the Cleveland Youth um, Center, and the Cle Cleveland C Senior Citizens Organization. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Mr. Diazdato, we're ready. All right, so now we have our second, again, our second ensemble that was selected to perform at Music for All. This is our saxophone quartet, and they will be performing uh, one of their three preludes by Gershwin.
so for for both these groups, their competitive season is not quite done yet. They uh, so the band performs uh, on Wednesday at, at our UL evaluation, and then both groups actually advance to state solo and ensemble after graduation. All right, after graduation um, on Memorial Day. Uh, so again, so and then also the saxophone group they'll be uh, competing on May fourth, uh, in uh, in all a leave excuse me at Kerr High School at the saxophone underground competition. So y'all give them a hand. And again, like our other group, again, presented in recognition of musical excellence and outstanding achievement at the Chamber Music National Festival to the Cleveland High School Royal Braves Saxophone Quartet, Danny Diostato and Stan Malden Directors, part of the uh, Music for All National Festival presented by Yamaha, March 1st through 23rd, uh, 2024, Indianapolis, Indiana. Give them one more hand. All right, continuing on with the agenda. Item six, presentations. Uh, letter A, presentation of pre-K and kindergarten summer school progress reports by Katherine Anderson. It's on page nine in your board book, Ms. Anderson. Well, I fear that I did not bring much pomp and circumstance with my presentation, but I do promise that it will be short. Uh, so ultimately, I'm here to um, give you a little bit of background about the summer school progress report that you do have on the agenda for approval. I don't think the, is it turned on? That's a good question. Probably not. Now it is. Okay, so uh, you uh, probably already know that we do have a required summer school program for our pre-K EB students going into kinder and our kinder EB students going into first grade, and that is required by Chapter 89. Um, but what you may not realize is that Chapter 89 also requires um, us to create a student progress report uh, that is sent home to the parents at the uh, conclusion of the program, um, as well as that should be provided to the teacher at the beginning of the next school year. Um, and unfortunately, at this point, our district did not have a um, process for this. So in order to make sure that we are following the law, um, we did create two options to run by our um, stakeholders. We looked at the tr traditional report card um, that we currently use in kindergarten, and we looked at uh, what I is basically uh, a basic skill inventory, kind of a checklist of what kids can and cannot do. Um, we obtained feedback from teachers and administrators and uh, we found that the basic skill inventory was the overwhelming front runner. Um, and so what we are bringing as a proposal today um, is that skill inventory. It includes skills such as segmenting words, onset and rhyme, letter names, letter sounds, vocabulary, comprehension, spelling, rote counting, and number recognition. And so in your board book, you have the pre-K and kindergarten versions of this, which of course come in English and Spanish. And so ultimately the proposal is uh, to bring this to you guys um, as part of chapter 89 and hopefully get your approval. And so with that, any questions before we move on? This will be in, in, uh, for the district. Cummins uh, Summer School? Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions? Okay. okay thank you. I told you it would be short. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Anderson, for working to get the district's bilingual program in compliance. <laughs> Next item on the agenda, we have item six, uh, presentations. Sorry, we just did that. So I was going to make you do it again. Item seven, we're moving on to construction update. Uh, it's on page 14 in the board book, and we have Scotty Lewis here with LAN to present. Good evening, Mr. McCandless uh, board. Um, mine might be shorter than the previous one, so uh, real quick. It's not working. Did she turn it off? Uh, 
uh, the staff development admin building. Uh, we're wrapping it up. Um, the HVAC test and balance is about 99% complete. There's a few uh, control items that we've been waiting on. Uh, they should be here this week so we can get that test and balance done. Once that's done, the commissioning can get wrapped up. Uh, the punch list work continues. They're about 70 to 75% complete on that, and they're working on closeout. I've challenged them to see if they could get a final change order uh, ready for uh, next month. We'll see. Uh, it may be June, but uh, they're getting very close. Uh, there's still a few minor little changes that have been added um, by the by the admin uh, that we're working through as well, so that, that could hold things up a little bit. On the satellite service center, um, they the concrete is over 95% down. Uh, the light pole bases are about 50% complete, and uh, installation of the MEP is commenced on the portable building. If I if you recall, the portable building was installed over uh, spring break. So I've got a few pictures. That's a dumpster pad that hadn't been poured yet. Um, but pretty much every, all the other concrete's been poured. Um, that was the last concrete pour that was done right there. So uh, the other projects, uh, the traffic signal, like I said last month, the traffic signal is scheduled to be complete uh, by the summer. Um, Santa Fe Middle School is still working through a few minor items, and I haven't gotten an update from Polk lately. I'm going to push on them. Uh, the baseball, softball, and Pine Burr, they're complete. Any questions? Thank y'all. Thank you, Mr. Lewis. Moving on to item eight, reports. Superintendent's report. The student enrollment and attendance rate data Board, as of Friday, April the 12th, our district enrollment, enrollment is at 12,279. The district attendance is at 92.44%. So again, holding steady. They continue to work on it with the attendance incentives, and they seem to be working. Before we move on, I also have a presentation here of the Cottonwood Elementary by the Cottonwood principal, Ms. Barrett, and students. That is on page 79 in your board book, and it is being included under the superintendent's report. Ms. Barrett. Good evening. Superintendent McCandless, Board of Trustees, thank you for the opportunity to allow us to brag on our wonderful campus of Cottonwood Elementary. It is our mission to empower all scholars to achieve at high levels of learning. That's a good looking group, isn't it? <laughs> so just a few celebrations to point out. As far as academics are concerned, we were among the highest in growth in domain two for state accountability. This year we have had six teachers enroll in alternative certification programs. And we had two teachers to become fully certified this school year. So we went from eight IATs to three of them, who, two who became certified and six who enrolled in our ACP program. So that's always something to celebrate. Another celebration is our attendance for the fifth six weeks. It's 94.7. Just to look at our people who make it happen every day, our admin team, counselors, our wonderful instructional coaches. Of course, we couldn't do it without our custodians and safety team, our wonderful elective program, STEM library, our music program is really coming along, We're proud of their progress. Some of our groups, we have a chess club that's sponsored by inclusion teacher, Mr. Kimmery. We have a splendid folklorico dance group sponsored by Ms. Gomez. She is our behavior unit support. New this year, we have a rock and dance crew, so you should make it out to a pep rally sometime to check them out. Sponsored by our fourth grade teacher, Ms. Berrios. 
We also have soccer, basketball clubs where the students have to maintain certain grades and behavior in order to practice in the mornings. We have a choir club that's sponsored by Mrs. Jenkins. As I said, that program is really coming along. We have a Zumba club who won first place in the Cleveland Livestock Rodeo Parade. The group is sponsored by Life Skills Support Mrs. Guest, who is here with us this evening. Thank you for joining us this evening, Mrs. Guest. And we also have an art club sponsored by Mrs. Proctor, who is also here with us this evening. And at this time, she will introduce our wonderful CWE art students and allow them to present their work to you. Thank you. I am honored at this time to have the opportunity to share with you guys the artwork that my students are working on at school. The first guy that's standing right there, Carlos Salamante and Noel right here, they're our fifth graders who entered uh, their work into the Texas Soil and Water Conservation District Contest. It was a contest for uh, district-wide students at CIA for Cleveland ISD. Carlos won first place on the Cottonwood level. Noel won second place at the Cottonwood level. Carlos went on to win district third place for Cottonwood. So he was excited he, and they, they got an opportunity to win some money. So that was a good motivator for them. So they did really well. In the middle, we have Joy, yes, he's one of our inspiring artists. Um, he's a fourth grader and his artwork, hold it up, Joy, just a little bit. Currently, the, class, the school is working on, all my students are working on a one point perspective and that's his version of what we're working on today. So give them a clap for coming and I'm so proud of them and thank you for the opportunity to share Cottonwood art. Would you step back a little bit? Thank you, Ms. Barrett, and thank you, Cottonwood students. Great job. Number two, early voting for the Cleveland ISD School Board election will be April the 22nd through April the 30th, 2024. Item three, election day voting is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. on May the 4th, 2024. Number four, the Senior Awards Night is 6 p.m. on Thursday, May the 16th in the Cleveland High School cafeteria. Item B, board members, the financial reports can be found on page 27 in your board book, and item C, the campus and department reports on page 64. You do have principals and directors here tonight if you have any questions. <clears throat> any questions about bills and payroll or the investment report? Not, we can move on, Mr. McCowns. Item nine, the consent, consent agenda items. Item A, approve the investment report. That is on page 105. Item B is approve bills and payroll on page 116. And item C, approve the minutes of the regular meeting of March 18th and special meeting and board training of March 25th and the special called meeting of April the 1st. That's on page 238. Do I have a motion? So offered. A motion from Willie. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second from Wendy. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Motion passes, 7-0. Item 10, TASB policy updates. Letter A, second reading and final approval of proposed revisions to DCE local policy. This is on page 258 in your board book. Mr. Fritz is at the podium if you have questions. And actually, if you could, before you have any questions, there is a revision. So what I would like to do is kind of surmise uh, the purpose for uh, the revision to, to kind of just pull all this together. Uh, 
After reviewing the first reading with our attorney and our TASB representative, it was concluded that the best option would be to admit the list of positions to receive non-Chapter 21 contracts. As a growing district, this will allow us to revise the list as needed without having to update board policy multiple times and acquire a TASB charge with each additional update. Change, uh, changes to the list will be presented to the board for approval as needed. So that is kind of a, a summation of uh, that, that first reading that we actually had. Um, this one is actually just more purposeful. Um, of course, there's call savings associated with it, but also too, it's gonna be a, a more functional approach as well. Motion. So up. Motion. Okay. We have a motion from Willie and second from Kelly. Any other questions or discussion? Um, sorry, there was an update and I'm trying to get to it. Um, I'm, I'm the new new one here, so sometimes the legal use goes over my head. <laughs> um, if you could just reiterate one more time for me. Um, does this at all impact the due process of Chapter 21 employees? Because I'm understanding now there's two versions of the contract. Some get one, some get a different version. Is there a due process discrepancy between the two at all? Okay, great question. Great question. And really how this actually evolved under the non-Chapter 21 there was essentially two categories. You had an employment agreement and then you had a professional certified contract. And really what we're doing for simplicity purposes, the, it's just being merged together and it's under the umbrella now of just non-Chapter 21. So with the non-Chapter 21 contracts, they're probably I'm, I'm kind of interpreting your question from the standpoint, in a sense, how are they different than say a teacher contract? Mm -hmm. The teacher contracts, those positions require certification. Mm -hmm. These non-Chapter 21, they're, pro they're professional positions. However, a certification is not typically required with those positions. Okay. So that's kind of the, t the distinction between the two. So as far as the from the employee standpoint, it's just their certification. They're not gonna have any other differences if there's a grievance or that, all that process stays the same. That Everything from the HR standpoint that is correct, and, I, and the other thing is too, that's a, an, another good question, and the reason being is because when you're flipping through, and of course you see all the red striking through everything, that a lot of the things that you see that are, are, are taking out of there benefits the employee um, from protective measures. So it actually, uh, they have all the protective measures that you're concerned about, they're, they're still in place. Would you like to add anything, Mr. Connell? So as far, sorry, I'm losing my voice, but as far as grievances, so the non-Chapter 21 contract is really gonna reflect kind of like our probationary contract for teachers, which means that in order to be dismissed during the school year, it will have to be for good cause. And then at the end of the school year, they can be dismissed in the best interest of the district. So it mirrors the probationary contract of the chapter 21. Best interest of the district, can you kind of highlight that for me? Because that could be kind of convoluted to me. So there are several thresholds in order to uh, set part ways with an employee who has a contract. So throughout the year, we have to prove as a district that it's for good cause. Good cause could be something as, you know, they had a physical altercation with the student. Um, <clears throat> that's good cause to terminate someone throughout the year. For the best interest of the district, it means that we work with this employee throughout the year and we just see that it's best for the school district at the end of their contract not to continue that employment with them. Through documentation. With documentation, of course. Thank you. And and so, so sorry, I'm probably beating a dead horse here. Um, I just, before I vote on anything, I like to make sure I understand Absolutely. it to the best of my ability. Absolutely. So for, and here, 
correct me, please, if I am wrong. So certified personnel, our teachers, our admin, all of those will have the traditional contract they're used to. Who is getting this new contract? So it's not really a new contract. It's just that we had it in two different categories. We had an employment agreement. We had a professional certified certification contract. So we're just merging into one, which is the professional certification contract. So everybody who had an employment agreement, which is in the list that you should that have you have, and everybody who had a professional certification contract, they will continue to have that non-chapter 21 contract. So for example, an example could be my colleague, Ms. Erica McCarter. She's an executive director of human resources operation. Her job does not require her to be SBIC certified, but she's going to get a professional non Chapter 21 contract. So everyone will, I'm like winning now. So at, at the beginning of next year, everyone will have to sign a new contract, or does it just carry over? All of our contracts, they have to be renewed every year. Every year anyway? Yes. Okay. But it, it'll, it'll all be condensed to one? Is Correct. Okay. Correct. You'll have your non-Chapter 21 contracts, which do not require SBEC certification to do that job. Then you'll have your Chapter 21 contracts, right. which do require SBEC certifications to do that job, okay. like our teachers, our administrators. Okay. This can start sounding Greek to many. What it has done is at the recommendation of our school district council and at the recommendation of TASB council, they recommended that instead of Cleveland ISD doing what they had been doing, to move forward and do your non-chapter 21 contracts and your chapter 21 contracts. What I would like for you to explain to the board is by doing this, does it change their days at all, their salaries at all, their protections at all, their due process at all? And that answer is no, and the board needs to hear that. The only thing that has changed is the title of the contract they are receiving. All the other assurances remain. Right. That is correct, Superintendent McAllis. Everything remains the same. Their pay, their amount of days that they're gonna work, their uh, their eligibility to grieve, their due process, everything remains the same. Nothing changes when it comes to that. So we're essentially just changing the labels. Exactly. We're, for whatever reason, we had, let's say, peanut butter creamy, peanut butter crunchy, and it's like, well, it's just peanut butter. Why are we dividing it into different okay. things? Okay. Yeah. So I do have a question. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I thought it was over. I apologize <laughs> for that analogy. I couldn't think of anything. Um, <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> so that's going to, th those contracts or classifications, how will they differentiate from an at-will employee? So an at-will employment gets a letter of reasonable assurance. Mm -hmm. They don't get a contract. So good question. We have the Chapter 21 contracts, which is SBIC certification required which is our teachers, our administrators. We have our professional certification contracts that do not require aspect certification, but do require a level of skill or education. And then you have your outwell employees who don't require any of that, who get a letter of reasonable assurance. No, that's incorrect. Some of our employees get a letter of reasonable assurance, like our custodians, uh, our coordinators in human resources, our specialists in human resources, they get a letter of reasonable assurance. Okay, well, I'm just going to ask the question, why? <laughs> why don't they get something more than a letter of reasonable assurance? I don't know the details of that answer, but I can assure you that every school district, yeah, it's the same process for every school district. There's these three types of employees, your chapter 21, your non-chapter 21, and your at-will employees. We're not different than any other school district in the state of Texas. 
districts do the LRAs, the letter of reasonable assurances, because at will employees mm -hmm. are not afforded. They are at will, which means they can be let go. Uh, in this district, we choose with reasonable cause, not just because by, uh, but they do not have contracts protected to them under state TEA or SBEC. So districts give them what's called an LRA. So and it works both ways. Also, the employee has the right to depart ways with us mm -hmm. at any time for any reason. So a custodian can say, I don't longer want to work for Cleveland ISD. I'm going next door. And a letter of reasonable assurance allows them to do that. A contract, we could say, well, wait a minute. We're going to hold your certification or any, but they don't have a certification with the state. So I think that's one of the reasons because there's no certification of any kind required. Any other questions? We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? I oh. no, it's fine. She was asleep. I was thinking. The motion passes 7 0. Thank you, Mr. Cano, Mr. Fritz. Agenda item 11 considered agenda items. Uh, letter E. On page 261, consider approval of resolution to approve positions to receive a, receive a non-Chapter 21 contract under DEC local. These are considered, so we have to do them one at a time. One at a time. Yes. Off a motion, we accept. Right. One motion from Willie to have a second, please. Second from Coach. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? The motion passes 7 0. Item B on page 263 consider approval of the proposed summer school reporting of student progress. Do you have a motion, please? So offered. A motion from Wendy. Do you have a second, please? Second. Second from Willie. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? The motion passes 7 0. Item C on page 271 consideration and approval of a resolution to compensate employees for a missed day on April the 8th, 2024. Do I have a motion, please? A motion from Kelly. And second. second, Coach. Coach. Coach, get you to it. Motion from Kelly, second from Coach. Any other questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Item D on page 273 consider approval of resolution regarding superintendent hiring authority for this is for the summer. Do I have a motion, please? So offered. A motion from Wendy. Do I have a second, please? Robert. Well, I got Robert and Coach at the same time. <laughs> All right. Coach, we got Robert's, Robert's giving it to Coach. Any other questions or discussion? Anyone down here? If not, all those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Item E on page 274 consider approval of certification of provision of instructional materials survey for the 2024 25 school year. Do I have a motion, please? So often. A motion from Willie. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second from Coach. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? Motion passes 7 0. Item F, page 298, consider approval to award request for proposal RFP 24 04 for bilingual education, instructional material, and related items. General Fund is the fund source, bilingual education allotment. Do I have a motion, please? A motion from Coach. Do I have a second, please? Second. Second from Wendy. Any questions or discussion? If not, all those in favor? 
Motion passes, 7-0. Item G, consider approval of district budgeted purchases above $50,000 as per CH local policy. Item one, on page 313, consider approval of contracted services with the Flippin Group for capturing kids' hearts. Professional development, uh, the funding source will be Title I Part A School Improvement Grant. All right, do I have a motion, please? A motion from Kelly, do I have a second, please? Second from Coach. Any questions or discussion? I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> they really have questions. Um, Just an explanation. What is this? The capturing kids' hearts. Yes, sir. We will let principals come up and speak, but I'll, I'll give you a brief. The flip flip in group, the capturing kids' hearts, has been utilizing Cleveland ISD for a number of years. It is training that teachers and administrators attend uh, to teach them uh, how to uh, engagingly and appropriately work with students of at-risk population and background. Ms. Castillo, will you add to it as how it is implemented from the campus? Absolutely, so it is a character education implementation program and we are planning on training our entire staff. Um, it's all about building relationships, positive foundations for the staff with the students. Um, and I'm just gonna read this little snippet that we have. Capturing Kids Hearts provides a unique opportunity for our educators to receive training that will equip them with strategies to foster a more productive learning environment for our students. The campus will receive initially a two-day training for the entire campus and additional training through the school year by an assigned Capturing Kids Hearts. Um, the group will also be able to be a part of a special cohort and throughout the school year. Is this in conjunction with CHAMPS or have anything to do with CHAMPS? So it is in conjunction with CHAMPS but separate because this is more about the relationship and the, po the positive relationships with students. Um, it's about teaching our teachers how and our staff members how to build those strong foundations and how to character education for our staff. Okay, and then CHAMPS is the behavior model for the student. Explain the difference to me. So CHAMPS is how to set up a classroom like student expectations. Um, capturing kids' hearts is training the teachers on exactly that, how to capture a student's heart, how to build those positive relationships with students, how to, how to capture the kids' hearts. And CHAMPS didn't have that component? Not this component, no ma'am. And is this price tag for the entire district or just your campus? So this is for our campus. We're piloting it um, for this coming year. Well, I'll just yeah. add that um, one of the uh, very popular quotes from Capturing Kids Hearts is that children don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. I mean, yes, that's and a popular so, educational quote I've heard yeah. since I was in college. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's really rooted from the foundation of the flipping group and the work that they do. And so CHAMPS is about the routines and procedures and how to manage the classroom. And then Capturing Kids Hearts is about the relationship that the teacher builds with the students. And this um, was selected and vetted uh, because we are working with school improvement and Libra 3 addresses school culture and that's an area that initially CMS started with and struggled with. They've made a lot of gains. They've come a long way, but we still have work to do. Other questions? Any other questions? If not, all those in favor? What'd you say? We're All voting yes or no. Yes, okay, 7-0. That's right. Thank you. Item 12 on the agenda, review training hours for board members. This is on page 331. Board President Chris Wood will read the announcement.
just read the hours for each. All right. The following first year board members have completed the local district orientation training. Wendy McNair. The following first year board members have completed the orientation to the Texas Education Code. Wendy McNair. The post legislative update to the Texas Education Code. The following board members have completed the update. Chris Wood, Kelly Jinko Axton, Amanda Brooks, Robert Howe, Willie Carter, Wendy McNair, and Marvin Searles. The team building, the following board members have com completed the team building training requirement. Chris Wood, Kelly Jinko Axton, Amanda Brooks, Robert Howe, Willie Carter, Wendy McNair, and Marvin Searles. The additional continuing education, the following board members have completed the continuing education requirements, Kelly Jinko Axton, Amanda Brooks, Willie Carter, Wendy McNair, Marvin Searles. The following board members are currently deficient in meeting the additional continuing education requirements, Chris Wood and Robert Howe. The following members have time remaining to complete the additional continuing education requirements and have not scheduled this training, Chris Wood, Robert Howe evaluating the and improving outcomes through effective government is required every two years the following board members have completed this training chris wood kelly jinko axton amanda brooks robert howe willie carter wendy mcnair and marvin searles the following board members have completed the biennial training identifying and reporting abuse trafficking and uh, other maltreatment of children Wendy McNair, Amanda Brooks, Kelly Jinko Axton, and Marvin Searles. The following board members are deficient in meeting the required biennial training on identifying and reporting abuse and trafficking. Chris Wood, Robert Howe, Willie Carter. The following board members have <coughs> time remaining to complete the biennial training on identifying and reporting abuse and trafficking and have not yet scheduled it. Chris Wood, Robert Howe, and Willie Carter. School safety, the biennial training on school safety has been completed by Chris Wood, Amanda Brooks, Kelly Jinko Axton, Marvin Searles, and Willie Carter. The following board members are deficient in meeting the required biennial training on school safety. Wendy McNair and Robert Howe. The following board members have time remaining to complete the biennial training on school safety and have not yet scheduled this training. Wendy McNair and Robert Howe. <coughs> the following board members have exceeded required continuing education hours. Board member Wendy McNair exceeded the required amount of continuing education by 1.75 hours. Board member Kelly Jinkle Axton exceeded the required amount by four additional hours. Board member Marvin Searles exceeded the required amount by three additional hours. Board member Willie Carter exceeded the required amount of continuing ed by four hours. Uh, I believe that's it. The last one. Amanda. Uh, I'm not seeing. I'll read it. Okay. We'll add one. It's board member Amanda Brooks exceeded by one additional hour. Okay. We'll move on to item 13, Mr. President. Executive session pursuant to Texas government code. Board will recess for executive session. 655.